Hi class, I'm doing math video today and um, some fun stuff. So stay tuned and work with me, ready to count. How many do we have? Can you show your fingers? Okay, how about now? How many are there? Showing me your fingers. There's five and two. Seven. Let's change this up a bit. How about now? Five and one. Six. You got it? Let's count on. There's five. So you know you've got five. We don't have to count them. We already know that's five. Five, six, seven, eight. It's good to count on. Five, six, seven, eight. Let's do, let's do another one. Five, Oops, six. Last one. Five, six, seven, eight. I noticed some of you, especially the kinders, have been doing your number bonds, so I'm really glad to see that. Let's put these out. Got my five blue. And my three red. How many are there? Five, six, whoops, seven, eight. Can we do a number bond for that? I wonder how many different number bonds you can think of. I know you're thinking. Show me with your fingers. All right. So all together it's eight. We could split it up into the five and three. Can you think of another number bond? I know some of you are thinking of this one. Eight, five, and two, and one. Some of you have been counting in twos. Can we make number bonds with twos? Let's see. Two, four, six, eight. Let's make a new number bond. Eight. One, two, and one, two, and one, two, and one, two. Four twos. Two, four, six, eight. All different number bonds. Maybe you'll make some number bonds next week and you can show me. Show me in a picture. I'd love to see it. All right, what am I doing next? Oh, I need to erase this because the first graders, the first graders have been working on something slightly different. So here is our eight. Here's our eight, still eight. And the first graders have had math that has talked about plus 10. So I'm gonna add another one, two, three, four, five, let's do red ones if I can, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we have eight and ten. Let's do some counting on. This is ten. We know this is ten. It's a ten frame. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Let's write that. How many tens? One ten. 
How many more? Eight more. We had eight, and then we added 10, and we got 18. What if we had, let's do this number. This number is five and one, six and 10. How much have we got? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. One, 10, and six more, 16. There's 16 up in our, let me get a little pointer. Here's 16 up in our number chart. I'm going to take this down for a minute. What if we were to add 10, 10 more to 16? Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, we get to 26. First graders, I've sent you a, a hundreds chart, so if you're going to add and take away 10, you can look at the hundreds chart. It will help you. Okay, let's start at 16 again. What if we were to take away 10? So we're going to jump back 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Whoop! It's 6. 16 take away 10 is 6. 16 with 10 more is 26. Let's see what happens to a different number. Let's start with 38. What do you think take away 10 would look like? I want to remind you that 38 is three tens and eight more. So if we take away one 10, we won't have three tens anymore. We'll have how many tens? Yep, let's take away 10. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, it's sitting right above the 38. It's 28, two tens and eight more. Let's go back to 38. What if we were to add 10? We have three tens and eight more. If we add 10, how many tens will we have? Let's find out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, forty-eight. 10, 48. So you can go up and down numbers adding 10 and taking away 10. Um, I'm gonna show you that on this board if I can a little bit. 16, take away 10, take away 110, it leaves us just 6. And 16 plus 10 is one more 10, so it's 26. How about, um, let's do a funny number like uh, 42. Now, how many 10s are in 42? There are four 10s and two more. What if we were to add one more 10? How many 10s would there be? Five 10s. Five 10s and two more. What if we were to take away 10? Yep. There would be three 10s and two more. That's how you move up and down in 10s. Soon, I want you to move up and down like in two 10s or three 10s. That's going to be a challenge. Okay. Thank you for talking to me. Now, I have my next thing to do. Oh, it's to talk about something mathy that doesn't seem like it's math. It's to do with spirals. Spirals. I know we've talked about this before. Look at the spiral on this shell. It's the way a shell, a shell starts out small and then it grows and it grows in this beautiful shape, a spiral shape. One of the things I was thinking you could do today, um, this week is look for snails. And they have a beautiful, you have to be very gentle with a snail because their shell is not too hard. But they have a beautiful spiral on them. So I'm going to read you, if I've got time here, I'm going to read you a book about spirals. And then we're going to do a little more math about spirals. So that should be fun. This book is called Swirl by Swirl. And it's, it's called Spirals in Nature. Spirals we can find all over 
the world and it's by Joyce Sidman and pictures by Beth Crohn's and it is a beautiful book and it even won an award because it's so beautiful Ooh. if you just look at this picture I wonder how many spirals you can see spirals start in the middle Okay, a spiral is a snuggling shape. It fits nicely, neatly in small places. It coils up tight. You can roll something into a spiral. Here's a bull snake rolled into, coiled into a spiral. Coiled tight, warm and safe. An animal when he's sleeping curls like a spiral. A chance to expand. So you're all coiled up and then you expand as big as you can be. Can you coil up and now expand? The chipmunks, the harvest mouse, look at the little tail is curled. Was there a harvest mask coiled up in here? Oh yes, there they were, coiled up. All sorts of animals coiled. And now they've expanded, they've stopped sleeping. My dog Rose sleeps kind of in a spiral with her head tucked in. It's a way of protecting your head. A spiral is a growing shape. It starts out small and gets bigger, swirl by swirl. All of these beautiful nautilus shells started as a small shell and then grew and their spiral grew larger. I have a shell here. Oops. You can see inside it's a spiral. And it started out small and then it got bigger and bigger as the animal grew. A spiral unwraps itself. Look at these curled little leaves. They're curled in like that. Can you do that with your hand? And then unwrap yourself. Plants like to be in spirals and unwrap. One soft curl at a time. A spiral is a strong shape. It protects the outside. The outside of us needs protecting, and so it's a good strong shape. Outer curves protect what's inside, like a snail. Ooh, here is a hedgehog curled, and its pokey part on the outside protects its inside. A spiral knows how to defend itself. Ooh. A ram's horn is a spiral, and that makes it a strong shape. A spiral reaches out to explore the world. Oh, look at the arms on an octopus. They spiral, and then they coil, uncoil. Or maybe even a seahorse with its tail. It uses it to hook onto things. It winds around and around and clings tight, grasping what it needs. It's like a hand. It never has trouble holding on. A spiral is a clever shape. Look at the spiral tongue of a butterfly. Or the spiral of a spider web. You know, to make its web, it starts in the middle and then it goes round and round and round. And a bee. Oops, on this one, it is bold. Oh, there are spirals on waves. And beautiful. Lots of flowers have spirals. Look in the middle of them. I love the pictures of your plants you sent me. A spiral moves. It swirls through water and gathering bubbles. Like a, have you ever seen a 
spiral in your bathtub when the water's going down, or maybe even the toilet. It twists through the air. Ooh, that's a dangerous one with clouds on its tail. And even our stars have spirals. It stretches starry arms through space, spinning and sparkling, forever expanding. Or it curls up neat and small, warm and safe in its snuggly shape. And there's more information. Spirals are an amazing shape and they're very mathematical. Lots of math in a spiral if you want to research that. But I wanted to show you that I've been working on a spiral and you can too because you know this you know this activity. It's the hundred spiral. Didn't get to a hundred, but you can see. Let's see if I can get this my camera working. I have counted out tens. I have ten pennies, and I have ten dimes, and ten shells. I had to go around the house and find ten animals. And I could put ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. I could put little numbers next to it too. You, that would be a fun thing for you to do at home. Make a hundred spiral and take a picture and send it to me. I would so love to see that. You could add numbers if you want to or not. These are, remember, these are our little numbers we would put next to each 10. But I'd love to see a picture and you can use anything you want. I was using some of Daniel's old little animals that he liked to collect little animals so he has a lot of little turtles all right see you soon bye bye